Hello, and this is Rich Bankhead with our first lecture in section six. And in section six, we're going to be working on op amps or operational amplifiers, as they're called in their full name, but usually for short, we say op amps. And so, first of all, Back to the Future came out in 1983, I believe. And this is a, the introduction to the movie where Marty is turning on the amplifier to plug into his guitar and he's going to use the amplifier on the left to drive the speaker on the right so that he can amplify his guitar signal. And so um, in the opening scene the uh, speaker explodes and blows him through the back wall and it's one of the, in my opinion, one of the best introductions of a sci-fi film from uh, this era in the 80s. And so um, it follows by uh, music from Huey Lewis in the News as he's skateboarding uh, to class because he's late for school. Anyway, so amplification. We're going to take the signal from the guitar across the pickups and then amplify it into a large sound signal. And so generally amplifiers or simply amp is, a, is a, any device that changes usually typically increases the amplitude of a signal. The relationship of the input of an amplifier usually is expressed as a function or the output of an amplifier is usually expressed as a function of the input frequency and this is called a transfer function of the amplifier and the magnitude of the transfer function is determined or called the gain and so when you get to circuits two you'll look at transfer functions in more detail and so why amplification um, a couple examples your iPod and I guess uh, iPods are sort of not the thing anymore so maybe your uh, iPhone drives earbuds and typically those are 16 or 32 ohms in resistance. It's powered by a, a volt and a half battery. So the current needed to drive the iPod earphones is one and a half volts divided by 32 ohms or 46.8 um, milliamps. And typically digital to analog converters, the output's typically 20 milliamps maximum. So converting the digital signal to an analog signal um, requires amplification. So current amplification is needed in this case. And we're going to increase the current so that we can uh, drive the earphones. Another case, uh, cell phone. A wireless signal is received at typically less than one microvolt. And an A to D converter chip, so to take that analog signal and convert it to a to digital expects a zero to three volt input. And so signals ranging up to three volts get accurate digital representation. So we need to take that antenna signal from your cell phone and then we need to voltage amplify it or increase the amplitude of the voltage of that signal. And so we start with uh, this chip and it was introduced in by Fairchild Semiconductor in 19, I believe 68. It's an operational amplifier and this is the 741. And so the picture on the right, it's a chip, an integrated circuit chip, and it's got eight pins. And so those pins are represented uh, as follows with the op amp symbol, which is a, um, a triangle rotated um, to the right or to the left. And so we'll talk more about these inputs. And so um, the pinouts are given in the next couple slides. And so for the op amp drawing, it has a positive and a negative power supply. So it has two power supplies. And it's very important that this is a power chip. It's not a passive chip. So we must put power on the chip. And there's a V plus and a V minus. The diagram also has an output and it has two inputs, an inverting and a non-inverting input. And sometimes the inverting and non-inverting inverting inputs are the locations of them are switched depending upon the drawing. And so be careful of that. And so if I take uh, an op amp, an LM741, I can snap it into a breadboard like this and then make connections to each side so I can get to all of the pins. And so across the middle of the breadboard, and so the sides are, are separated and they're independent. And here, here's the pin out. Uh, the pins that we're really gonna be concerned with are two, three, four, seven, 
and 6. So the inverting and the non-inverting input in 2 and 3. The negative and positive power supply in 4 and 7. And the output of the op amp in 6. And then note that pin 8 is not connected. And so this is a top-down picture looking onto the chip. And it's just sort of a helpful representation when you start working with op amps in the lab. Um, how are op amps used? Op amps are used as basic building blocks for analog computers. Um, they, they perform basic uh, mathematical operations from integration to differentiation, addition, sign change, scaling. And again, 1968 Fairchild Semiconductor as UA741. It was first introduced. And we'll see some of those circuits as we go. If you look online under National Semiconductor, um, there are two guides. This is the applications guide for op amp, and they're about uh, on the order of 30 to 50 pages, and they just have circuits um, over and over for uses of op amps. And so on the beginning here, you see the inverting amplifier, and it takes and switches the sign of a signal. And so there will be considerably uh, more circuits if you'd like to look up these guides, and they can easily be found online with a Google search. And so the circuit collection for op amps, but we're not going to go through them all here. We'll go through several of the examples, but not all of the examples. And so for op amps, when we talk about op amps, um, all the voltages on an op amp we talk about in reference to a common node or a ground. And so you see that drawn here that I have VN, and so the negative input and the positive input. We have VN, VP. We have VCC, plus and minus VCC. So notice that the power supplies are reversed. One's a negative voltage and one's a positive voltage. And then for our currents, we're gonna assume that all of our currents, when we do uh, current balances, we're gonna do a lot of node voltage with, with op amps when we analyze them, and we'll, so we'll do current balances. We'll assume that all of the currents flow into the op amp. And so this will be our diagram and it'll get a lot simpler. The voltage supplies will go away and typically we'll just focus on the op amp. And if we need them, we'll just write them right next to the op amp and you'll see that in later slides. So the behavior of an op amp is, is given by the piecewise functions on the left and graphed in the graph on the right. So I'm point out a couple things that are important that the op amp has points of saturation. So the op amp can't output any uh, voltage greater than the plus VCC input or less than the negative VCC input. And so the op amp will saturate and give me no more than plus VCC or no less than minus VCC. And in the in-between re region, it, the op amp is governed by a, a linear line that has a slope of A, and it's where A is the gain of the op amp. So this is a very narrow region where the op amp operates in this linear region. And so the, the blue line across the middle connecting the positive and negative saturation is called the, and this region is called the linear region, and it's given by minus VCC divided by A. And so let's take a look at what possibly the values of A might be. And so the gain A is rarely less than 10,000, so it's a very large number. And so let's just um, take a look at what the difference VP minus VN might be because the, the V output in the, in the example is A times the difference between the, the inverting and the non-inverting inputs. And so if VCC is 20 volts, and they rarely exceed 20 volts for op amps, and A is, let's say, 10 to the fourth, the V output is can saturate at 20 volts. That's the max it can be. So we can solve for the VP minus VN difference. It would be 20 volts divided by the, the 10 to the fourth. And so we find that VP minus VN is 2 millivolts. And so the range where the op amp doesn't saturate is very, very small, it's two inputs. And so therefore an, an op amp is constrained to its linear region when the difference, the, the amplitude, or the magnitude difference between VP minus VN is less than two millivolts. And so 
Because of this, we're going to make some assumptions for an ideal op amp. We're going to assume that VP minus VN is zero. We're also going to assume that the current flowing into the op amp, IP and IN, the inverting and non-inverting inputs, is equal to zero. And we're going to assume A is infinite. And so we use these assumptions to analyze op amp circuits. And we're also going to assume that the op amp is operating in its, its linear region when we when we make our analysis for the voltage relationships. And so this is an introduction to op amps. And in the next couple slide uh, presentations, we'll review some more uh, cir circuit solving basics. And then we'll look at different types of op amps, which do different functions. And then finally, we'll look at a couple applications of op amps. So. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.